Thank you so much for organizing this event and also for inviting me. So I'm very excited about this. I'm, I'm looking forward to the other talks as well. And I think we are going to have some uh, very interesting uh, presentations as well as discussions. Um, so I'm pleased to talk about LALI, consistent automated, consistent automated Machine Learning. My name is Martin Hirzel. This is work together with Guillaume Baudard, Kiran Kate, Ari Ram, and Avi Shenar. And um, so let me jump in by giving you the context, um, sorry. Uh, so LALI attempts to cover a broad spectrum of automation. So in AutoML, uh, there's a spectrum of what you can um, configure using the automation. So which part of your uh, machine learning workflow and also of how that is being configured. And so what is being configured ranges from the choices of individual operators, such as um, classifiers or transformations for feature engineering and so on, uh, it also includes things like hyperparameter configuration, where in, uh, any given op operator often has many hyperparameters, um, as uh, all the way up to pipeline topology, where you might want to configure how these operators are being put together into a larger machine learning pipeline. And then there's a spectrum of how it is being configured. Of course, um, you can always configure everything by hand, and scikit-learn is an excellent library for doing that. Um, uh, especially since it comes with such a large set of um, operators or algorithms that uh, already ship with it. Um, but then there are also various open source tools and increasingly also industrial tools out there for um, automating parts of this spectrum. Um, and I'm distinguishing here between automation with control, where you can uh, use automation to simplify your tasks, but if there are any particular pieces that you still want to do by hand, you can do that. Uh, versus automation that is more black box, where you're basically saying, here's my data set, give me a pipeline. Um, I, uh, I, I don't want to um, influence too much what's happening inside of that. And I'm listing a few um, open source tools here that, um, that fall into each of these categories. Now, um, for each of these tools that I'm listing, um, they are all capable of automatically finding good configurations, so good machine learning pipelines uh, that um, satisfy a particular task. Uh, all of the tools that I listed on the previous slide are open source. And it also so happens that um, most of the AutoML tools these days are scikit-learn based. So they're, um, they're working with scikit-learn operators. Um, unfortunately, each of these tools only supports one part of the automation spectrum. So sometimes they, uh, they don't cover everything of what is being configured. And sometimes they don't cover everything in terms of how you configure it, um, giving you only a small amount of manual control. Um, there's another quibble that I have with that, and that is based on, um, on the programmer experience. So if you're using AutoML as a programmer, then ideally you would like to have the same programming model whether you're doing things by hand, manually, or automatically. Oh, I think uh, these slides are advancing uh, without me clicking them. Um, whether, you are, uh, uh, you, whether you do things by hand or automatically, um, and also which part of the workflow you're automating. So in terms of a programming model for AutoML, the requirements are uh, we want to support the entire automation spectrum that you saw earlier in a consistent way. So you, it uh, should all have the same look and feel. And also we want to be consistent across tools, in other words, optimizers that you can use for, for, for finding pipelines for you. Um, and uh, we are actually looking at HyperOp, Gritzer, CV, and SMAP, but there are many other tools out there that hopefully we can eventually support. And um, uh, as a quick preview, I'm going to show you later how we accomplish that by search space generation. And then another objective for the programming model is to extend established abstractions. So it's, um, it's challenging to learn new libraries or languages. Um, and so the more those libraries look like existing libraries, uh, the easier it becomes. And so for Lale, we made a conscious decision to make everything as, look as similar as possible to scikit-learn. And um, when it comes to specifying hyperparameter um, search spaces to use JSON schema, which um, many of you might know from uh, Swagger or OpenAPI specifications. So uh, that's another very well-established technology. All right, so let me give you an overview of the LALE programming model, uh, kind of bottom up. So um, one thing that uh, when you put together machine learning pipelines, you have to do is you have to choose operators. 
And um, doing that manually in something like scikit-learn is trivial. You just say, well, pipeline equals the operator that you chose. And then in scikit-learn, you can call fit on that to obtain a trained version of that operator. Um, in Lale, we let you automate the operator choice. And the way you specify that in Python syntax is just using this vertical bar, which we call the OR combinator. So you can specify that your pipeline is J48, which is a decision tree with pruning from Weka, or LR, which is a logistic regression operator from Second Learn. And then instead of calling fit, you call auto configure, and you have to specify an optimizer that you want to use to search between these two choices. In this case, we are using grid search, which um, just comes with Second Learn, so it has the advantage of being easy to install. And um, it is very well suited for a small set of discrete choices that you want to exhaustively explore. Now, besides choosing operators, another task is you might want to tune your hyperparameters so that your pipeline performs well for your particular data set. Uh, doing that manually, again, this is second learn syntax, um, you can just specify the hyperparameters as arguments to the constructor of your operator. So J48 with R equals false and C equals 0 0.3 will configure um, this decision tree uh, suitably. Now, um, in order to do that, you actually have to know what these hyperparameters are. And as I mentioned earlier, we are actually specifying these using JSON schemas. So for instance, R is just a Boolean, whereas C is a pruning confidence threshold. And um, now when, once we move on to optimization, we need to tell the optimizer actually what is a good search space for this hyperparameter. And even though it's a number that can between, be between zero and one, for uh, optimizers, it's, uh, it turns out to be better to only search between zero and 0 0.5. Now, um, the JSON schema specification also allows you to specify conditional hyperparameters. So for instance, since R says uh, reduce error pruning, um, you might not want to use um, uh, set this confidence threshold for the pruning unless you actually chose that uh, pruning it should be active in the first place. And so you can uh, specify that um, also using JSON schema. Now, don't worry. Um, in order to use Lale, you rarely have to specify these schemas because um, Lale comes with a large set of operators for which uh, it already has schemas pre-specified. So um, to use hyperparameter tuning in, uh, in Lale, basically you, uh, all you have to do is omit the hyperparameters for the operator. So instead of writing J48 parenthesis specific values for hyperparameters, here we are just writing J48 and we are leaving it to, um, to this auto configure call to actually um, tune the hyperparameters for you. Uh, in this case, instead of grid search, we chose the SMAP optimizer which happens to be the same optimizer that is also being used in Auto SKLearn, which is a, um, a famous AutoML open source package. And so we are using that as a backend in Dali or offering that as one of the choices of backends in Dali. So the next thing you might want to configure is the composition of the pipeline itself. And so unfortunately, these code examples have to get a little bit longer in order to introduce these concepts. Um, but I'll take you through this uh, one line at a time so you can read along with me. So we can do pre-processing for numerical features in the data set by projecting out only the columns in the data that uh, are numbers. And then one popular pre-processing for numbers is PCA. And this greater, greater sign is what in Nali we call the pipe combinator. So the pipe combinator basically says, pipe the output from the previous operator from the projection into the input of the next operator, uh, which is the PCA for dimensionality reduction. Similarly for strings, um, in this data set, let's assume that strings are categorical features. And so we can uh, project out only the categorical features and pipe those into a one-hot encoder, which is, um, uh, which is basically what turns these strings into numbers so that you can then use off the shelf um, algorithms that can only deal with numbers. And um, this next line, pipeline equals prep num and prep string, pipe into concatenation and logistic regression, uh, introduces one more combinator. Um, the and combinator basically is a, is a com uh, uh, says do both of these things on the same data set. So prepare the numbers um, with one subpipeline, prepare the strings with another subpipeline, and then concatenate the features that you get from both. And then finally, um, uh, since this is the manual pipeline composition, there's actually no auto ML involved here. We can just call pipeline fit 
and, uh, and it will do the same as you would always do with any kind of operator or pipeline. Now, um, you have actually seen all the combinators that Lale has. There are only three of them, the pipe combinator, the AND combinator, which you see here, and then on a previous slide, you already saw the OR combinator. So at this point, you have learned all of the basic Lale syntax. Uh, and by the way, uh, even though I'm saying syntax, Lale is just a library, so, uh, so it's really just uh, in Python. You can use your favorite Python editor or Jupyter Notebooks, et cetera, to edit it. Anyway, so um, let's take a look at automated pipeline composition. Um, Lale provides a feature for specifying grammars of pipelines. And um, so in, if you remember um, what context-free grammars look like, you, uh, you define non-terminals. So for instance, start equals, um, and then the right-hand side of a non-terminal is really just a normal Lale pipeline. So um, the start symbol of this grammar says, well, do some pre-processing and then one of these two um, classifiers. Then the pre-processing itself, we are saying, well, it can be either no pre-processing at all, um, which of course will only work on numeric data sets, um, or it could be, and this is where it gets um, interesting, uh, it could be this very same non-terminal pre-processing followed by exactly one other pre-processing operator. So this non-terminal in the grammar is defined recursively and it in allows um, the automated um, uh, optimizer to explore pipelines of any number of um, pre-processing operators. And then prep one uh, here for this example, I just put in standard scalar normalizer polynomial features of PCA. So this, um, this grammar can generate um, uh, pipelines with these preprocessors. Of course, you can specify your own grammar. Um, and then um, when we, uh, if we want to um, use this as a search space for optimization, we actually, instead of just doing auto configure, we do one more step before that. We can unfold this grammar to a given depth. So, um, this basically means um, use up to three preprocessors and then just do the normal auto configuration. And here for the optimizer, we are picking hyper off. We could have also picked uh, the other optimizer for both. Um, so unfolding is one easy way to deal with grammars in pipeline search. Another easy way is randomized search, which, um, which Lale also supports. Um, then there are also some open source advanced um, grammar based optimizers, uh, which um, uh, which we haven't hooked up with Lale yet, but uh, if you're interested in one of those, maybe you want to work with us and contribute that. All right, so um, one more feature that I want to present is higher order operators. So what is an, a higher order operator in machine learning? Well, it's a machine learning operator that can take another machine learning operator as an argument. And a great example for that is ensembles. So for instance, Adaboost classifier is an ensemble method that comes from scikit-learn. And this ensemble is an ensemble of base estimators, which um, in this example, I'm just putting a decision tree classifier as the base uh, uh, operator. And then it's, uh, in this case, we are uh, building an ensemble of 10 of these decision trees. Now, uh, AWS classifier is a higher order operator because one of its uh, arguments is another operator. But um, you wouldn't uh, be able to tell that from the rest of the pipeline because uh, it gets used just like any other operator. So you can put it in a bigger pipeline, for instance, with a standard scalar uh, in front of it. And then you can just call fit on, on the resulting bigger pipeline, just like you usually would. Um, now, uh, when it get, comes to automation, um, actually, there are no really new features on this slide. And that's on purpose to keep things simple. Um, so you can also use an Adaboost classifier higher order operator and pass in this decision tree classifier. And notice I didn't specify the hyperparameters of the decision tree classifier. So that means those are left for AutoML to search. And then also you can use this classifier in the context of a bigger pipeline that again has, um, for instance, a choice of multiple operators for pre-processing. And then it gets piped into the higher order operator, into the ensemble. And um, just like before, you can call auto configure on that um, and use whichever your favorite optimizer is to, um, to search over that space. All right, so now you have seen all the basic features of Lale. Um, uh, that I, I realized this was a lot to see. So let me um, reinforce all of this by a concrete example. And these are all screenshots taken from a Jupyter notebook. And um, that Jupyter notebook is actually also available on the Lale open source page in case you want to try it out yourself. 
So um, as you would often do for any kind of uh, machine learning pipeline, you first import a bunch of operators. And as you can see, some of them come from some scikit-learn, some of them come from Lali, and actually one of them comes from XGBoost. Um, for the non-Lali operators, we have to do this wrap imported operators call. And what that does is it attaches hyperparameter schemas to these operators. And the reason that is necessary is so that then later on uh, we can use um, automated hyperparameter tuning there. All right, now that we have these operators, we can compose them into a pipeline. Uh, you already saw all of this syntax, so I'll just go over this quickly. This is a pipeline of three steps. So uh, the first step is a um, choice of scaling and normalization, or neither of those two. In other words, no op. The second step is dimensionality reduction, or no op. And then the third step is a choice of three different classifiers. Oh, no, sorry, regressors in this example. Decision tree regressor, linear regression, or XGP regressor. And of course, the visualization is consistent with, uh, with what you just saw in the pipeline code. Now, once you have this planned pipeline, um, let's import the hyperopt optimizer and also um, second learn metrics. Um, so for, for regression tasks, uh, one of the metrics that's popular is R square, uh, is the R square metric. And so now we can call planned pipeline configure, And just as before, we can pass in the training set, we can pass in the optimizer, we can pass in this metric. And we can also specify some resource bounds. So for instance, I didn't want to optimize for longer than 10 minutes. And any particular trial, I didn't want to run longer than 60 seconds. And I chose threefold cross-validation here to um, reduce the risk of overfitting. So, um, uh, hey, uh, Martin, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes. uh, if you can slow, uh, speak a little bit slower, that'd be great. Uh, we have some uh, attendees uh, feedback that you speak too fast to, uh, to follow. Yeah, if well, you can you slow so down much. a little bit, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for raising that. And my apologies for speaking too fast. No problem. Um, yeah. Let me uh, just recap this cell. Um, so what's happening here is maybe one of the most important parts of the talk. So it's worth saying twice and saying slowly. Um, we have a planned pipeline in line four. We call auto configure on that planned pipeline. Uh, auto configure will do both algorithm selection and hyperparameter tuning. And in order to do that, we are using the hyperopt optimizer backend. Hyperop being one of the optimizers that are bundled with Lale, and uh, it's a third-party open source project. And when you, um, when you use AutoML, basically what you're doing is you're making your task easier by spending more machine time. And you might want to specify exactly how much machine time you want to spend. And here we are saying, well, let's spend at most 10 minutes overall. And by the way, let's also only spend at most one minute for each run um, for each thing that we are trying out. And one other thing that's very important in automated machine learning is to use um, k-fold cross-validation. In this case, we are using three-fold cross-validation. The reason that that is so important in AutoML is because if you tune um, your hyperparameters and your algorithm choices too much to the training data, then you might be overfitting and see poor performance with your test data. And so uh, cross-validation can somewhat mitigate this effect. Now, after this uh, AutoML run, we get back a pipeline. And this resulting pipeline, the trained pipeline, uh, we can use it, um, for instance, by passing it to the R square score. Remember, R square is actually not a part of Lali. It is really just a part of scikit-learn. But uh, scikit-learn can determine this metric using this pipeline. And as you can see on the test set, the, um, after the, the R square score was 83%, which um, surprisingly is actually slightly better than the R square score during cross-validation. We can also visualize the resulting pipeline. Actually, Previously, you already saw that we visualized a planned pipeline, but the same visualization uh, works uh, orthogonally also after training. And um, one other feature that this visualization has that you, you will be able to see if you try this in a Jupyter notebook is uh, tooltips. So you can hover your mouse pointer over any of these operators to see what the automation, sorry, um, what the automation picked for the hyperparameters. So for instance, you can see here that uh, N estimators was 819. So this built a very big random forest of many trees. 
And um, one other thing that these slides don't demonstrate is that each operator in the visualization is also a hyperlink. So if you click on this operator, it will take you to a web page with documentation for the operator. Now, once you have this trained pipeline, uh, besides visualizing it, you can also pretty print it back as Python code. And there are two purposes for that. One is um, so that you can see exactly what happens. So it, uh, rather than using the toolkits, tool tips, sorry, you can also look at the pretty printed code to see exactly how each operator was, was configured. Another purpose is um, this Python code, you can actually also take it and run it wherever you like. So uh, for instance, you might want to tweak this Python code some more and you might want to edit it and say, well, actually, I think this is too many estimators. Let's see what happens when you only have 20 estimators. Or you might say, well, actually, um, I like how you picked the pre-processing, but let's try some other, um, some other regression model at the end. Um, and then, of course, once you are happy with the pipeline, you can take this code and deploy it wherever you like, so you can um, run it for actual scoring. All right, now um, you have seen both the overview of the features of Lale and you have seen the, um, the demo of uh, Lale in action. Uh, next, I want to show you how it works internally and specifically um, really how it uses different backend um, optimizers. And so really the, uh, the input, to, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, the, it works by using a search space generator and the input to the search space generator consists of a planned pipeline, which you specify it by hand using Python code. And it consists of these hyperparameter, spe hyperparameter schemas which are specified using JSON schema and lale.lib uh, has JSON schemas for a large set of um, machine learning operators. So um, if you can solve your problem with those, one of those operators, you will not have to specify your own hyperparameter schema. Of course, if you want to add your own operators for a specific task, um, then uh, you can do that. And then the search space generator will target three different optimizers and I will show um, how in a minute. The first thing that the, uh, that the search space generator does is it normalizes the schemas. So here's an example, uh, actually a simplified example of schemas for three operators. PCA um, has uh, uh, one number of components um, hyperparameter, which can be a number between zero and one, or it can be MLE, which is an automated way of picking the number of components. J48 is a classifier and it has two hyperparameters, R, and C, R um, can be true or false, so it's a Boolean, C can be a number uh, continuous between 0 and 0 0.5. And by the way, there's this, uh, uh, this is a conditional hyperparameter, so you can only, it only makes sense to specify C if, uh, if R is not true. And then third, logistic regression, again, it has two hyperparameters, a solver, which is a, one of these three categorical values, and a penalty, which is one of these two categorical values. And logistic regression, again, has this conditional hyperparameter constraint where not all combinations between solvers and uh, penalties are valid. Now, these conditional hyperparameters are actually very useful for AutoML because they help you prune the search space. They mean that AutoML doesn't have to uh, try out quite as many combinations, and that means it will run faster. Now, the first thing that Lali does under the hood is it will normalize this search space so here you saw, oh, you, there was a conjunction and there was a disjunction, so an or, an and, an implication. So uh, um, uh, the Lale normalizer will simplify all of this so that all you have left is disjunctions. So um, uh, for instance, there, uh, if you factor out all these conjunctions and conditional hyperparameters, you really are, end up with, uh, with these two possible search spaces for J, J48. Now, after normalization, the next thing that the Lale search space generator has to do is to, uh, to combine the planned pipeline together with these normalized schemas into a combined search space. And so this combined search space, uh, it will have one step for every step of the planned pipeline. Step zero just has the hyperparameter schema for the PCA copied from up here. Um, but step one actually needs to have a nested disjunction. 
So the outer disjunction is over the hyperparameter schema for J48 versus logistic regression. And then the inner disjunctions are just the disjunctions of the conditional hyperparameters for those two. Now, once Lali has internally produced this combined search space, it turns out the hyperopt optimizer, basically it requires this form of a search space. So Lale's search space generator has a very simple backend that goes from this combined search space to a hyperopt search space. And then uh, it can use hyperopt for the optimization as you have seen on, uh, in the demo before. Um, unfortunately for the other backends, we have to do a little bit more work. So the, um, starting from this combined search space, uh, for some of the backends, we have to flatten the search space. And this basically means rather than have a, having a dictionary that contains disjunctions that contain other disjunctions, we just flatten everything out into a single disjunction that just contains plain dictionaries. More specifically, um, uh, we essentially have to multiply out all the combinations. So you can see there are, um, there are four cases with J48 and four cases with logistic regression. But in all of those cases, you have to include the hyperparameter N, which was used for the PCA. And then in the four cases for J48, we are basically, um, uh, uh, we are repeating some of these cases for the different uh, ways of specifying the PCA. Once we have a flat search space, that is almost immediately usable for SMAP, um, SMAP being a second optimizer that we support. And then after you flatten the search space, one additional thing that you can do is you can discretize the search space. So for instance, in the flat search space, we have some continuous hyperparameters. N is a number between zero and one, and the um, hyperopt or SMAC can just pick any number between that and can really fine tune that number. For some optimizers, such as grid search, you have to provide a, uh, a discrete set of values. So for N, we are going to only consider 0 0.5, or 0 0.01. Uh, of course, you can control how many discrete values uh, Lali will attempt. Um, often you want to try three, four, five different uh, values in this space. Similarly, C is another case where we have to discretize the search space to provide many discrete choices. Other than that, the discretized search space, uh, discretized search space, pardon me, looks very similar to the flat search space you had there at the top. And of course, uh, um, we are going to use this discretized search, discretized search space with grid search. So when you saw an example earlier um, with grid search, this is what it was using. All right, this was a whirlwind tool, tour of the internals of Lali and um, of course of the search space generators. Now, um, I, me I mentioned earlier that Lali uses JSON schemas for hyperparameters and that you often don't have to specify those JSON schemas by hand because the Lali library contains these schemas for many operators. And so it's worth um, going through them a little bit. So um, as of today, Lali has 179 operators for which it provides schemas, operators being transformers or uh, classifiers or regression models, but operators also include uh, more advanced things such as higher order operators. Um, 46 of these are curated scikit-learn, hand curated scikit-learn operators. Um, now I'm actually not counting those 46 in the 179 above. So if you look at this count column, you'll see that it adds up to more because really these uh, 46 are a subset of 115 scikit-learn operators for which we have auto-extracted schemas. Um, the hand-curated cur schemas are slightly higher quality, but other than that, um, they really accomplish the same thing. And then in addition, we have uh, various operators, for instance, from AI Fairness 360, which uh, helps you mitigate unfair models, um, either by pre-processing or post-processing. We have various operators from AutoAI Libs, AutoAI being an IBM product. Um, and so in our open source Lale, uh, we, we provide many of the operators that are used by that product. Um, we have a separate GitHub repository with a couple of operators from GPL um, repositories. Uh, so J48 is a decision tree classifier and A rules is an association rule based classifier. Um, 
And then we have operators for imbalanced learning. We have uh, we have um, light GBM, which uh, um, which provides a very good gradient boosted for us. We have um, a couple of operators um, that are kind of high speed operators that uh, become useful when your data set is very big uh, and so on. So we have some PyTorch operators some spacey operators, uh, the list goes on. Um, again, if you don't see your favorite toolkit or operator in this list, um, uh, tell us about it and maybe you want to contribute it. Um, there's, there are um, detailed instructions for how to wrap your own operators for use with LALIC. Um, here is a very brief glimpse at some experimental results with LALE. And really, these uh, results, if you want to see more details on that, we have an archive paper, um, which, uh, which is at this URL. And of course, if you want to see the slides um, offline, I posted a link in the Slack as well as in this chat for, uh, for the URL of these slides. Anyway, so what we did here on the right is we tried out uh, a few popular data sets that are easily available. And then we tried four different optimizers for these data sets, actually five different optimizers, our baseline being auto SK learn out of the box. And so each of these numbers is how well does, um, uh, how many percent better or worse did Lale perform? So for instance, minus two means, oh, Lale did 2% worse for this particular configuration on, uh, than auto SK learn or the 2.5 plus 2.54 means, oh, for this particular data set, it actually did 2% better. And um, as you can see, sometimes it's slightly better, sometimes it's slightly worse, um, but overall um, it's in the same ballpark, which is really what we were aiming for. We were aiming for uh, making AutoML very easy to use. Um, we weren't really focusing on, uh, on advancing on uh, the, the accuracy of the resulting models. Um, we also, um, this paper also includes some results with case studies with different modalities. So for instance, these results were all based on tabular data, but we all, you can also use LALI with text data or with images or with time series. And of course, the set of operators that we, you will put into your pipeline will vary based on that. Um, and then I mentioned earlier that we go to great lengths to um, capture and use um, conditional hyperparameters, in other words, side constraints. And um, this paper also shows um, that uh, for certain data sets, uh, pruning the invalid configurations will actually um, give you a big boost because the uh, automated optimizer will have more opportunity to actually reach the part of the search space where the performance is good. Um, so we are almost out of time, uh, but we are also almost at the end of the presentation, fortunately. Um, so I started this talk by giving you the spectrum of automation with a spectrum of what is being configured and how is it being configured. And I hope I gave you evidence that LALE can really capture this NTI spectrum well. To conclude, LALE is open source. I have included the URL over here. So um, you, can all, you can pip install it from PyPy and you can just try it out. Um, uh, you can start using it for your own projects. We have uh, an active and growing user base. And of course, uh, we welcome contributions. Uh, there are many different things that you can contribute to optim operators, optimizers, um, and I'm sure there are other things also, bug fixes, et cetera. Um, in this talk, I did not talk about the product that IBM has for auto AI, but I do want to briefly mention it because Lali is actually being used in that product. Um, so I've included a URL over here, and I've also included the tagline, uh, which is that auto AI will help you find and deploy top performing models in minutes. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, auto AI internally uses Lali. So when you, if you uh, become familiar with Lali in the open source, um, uh, of course, it will also become easier to use the product if um, you, did, you so desire. Uh, thank you very much. That brings me to the uh, question and answer session of the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, there are a couple of questions here, if I could uh, help relay them. Uh, Kenneth Larson uh, asked, um, when Lolly runs, are the runs deterministic? Number one, uh, if you could talk about that. And then number two, to reuse the parameters, uh, are the configurations dumped in JSON? Uh, I know you showed the, the Python that was generated, but uh, does it need any additional configuration? 
Right. Um, so the first question was about determinism. And um, so the, uh, it's deterministic to the extent that the underlying operators and optimizers are deterministic. And of course, um, for instance, many cyclic learn op operators allow you to specify a random seed and Lale will also expose that same random seed. So you can configure that if you like. And similarly with the uh, underlying um, uh, the underlying optimizers, um, to the extent that they pro help you uh, specify a random seed in Nadi, you can do that as well. Um, the second question was about um, whether the hyperparameter configurations um, are also available in JSON. And so, yeah, I didn't mention that before. Once you get a pipeline back from Lale, you can do uh, multiple things with it. You can use it directly, so you can call predict on it. The second thing is you can visualize it. Um, you saw examples in this talk. The third thing is you can pretty print it um, as Python code. Uh, uh, you saw an example of that also. Um, it, uh, another thing is you can actually export it to a JSON file. And so Lale has its own specific JSON format for Lale pipelines. Um, and we, uh, of course, we have a Travis setup that tests the round tripping to and from JSON. And maybe I should mention one more thing that you can do is, of course, you can pickle it. Um, so you can, uh, you can pickle being a, a binarization format for Python code. Very good. Very good. Uh, another question uh, from Ross. Uh, are there any near-term plans for incorporating, uh, okay, so ICA, independent component analysis uh, hyperparameters into Lale? And, uh, and if not, uh, Ross volunteers. Oh, okay, well, this, this is excellent. Um, so to be honest, um, uh, if you look at those 178 operators, um, I know we have a PCA, I suspect you're probably right and we don't have an ICA right now. And um, so if you're willing to contribute that, that would be fantastic. Great. Let's see if there's any other questions in the chat. Ah, one other question. Uh, Mirel asked, uh, what do you think about Optuna for hyperparameter optimization? And I would, I would add, how long could that be integrated? Um, so unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Optuna, so I can't give you a very interesting answer to that. Um, we also don't have short-term plans of our own to integrate it. Um, that said, if there is enough community demand, or if somebody is willing to, uh, to if interested with working uh, in working with us on integrating it, uh, we would be very happy to uh, to look into that. Great. And uh, one other question from uh, Tamar asks: uh, Is there a, a max size on the file size? Uh, what happens with large? Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, what happens with, with large files? Uh, how, how do you manipulate those? Isn't it better to use a validation set? I may not understand the question completely. But, so. Right. Um, so I'm wondering, I, I think it's probably a question about um, computational limitations. So meaning awesome. you might run out of memory or you might uh, have to wait for a long time. So you might run out of time. Um, and both of those are very real difficulties in any kind of machine learning effort, including in auto ML efforts. Um, so of course, um, one popular thing you can do is you can subsample and uh, that kind of uh, uh, addresses the issue partially. Um, but uh, I'm glad you asked because in Lali, we actually did run into that issue. Um, and so we have some provisions for it, even though of course they could be extended further. And that is what I would like to refer to as batching or in circuit learn terminology, you would refer to that as partial fit. Um, partial fit being where you feed your data set only one chunk at a time so that any, at any given point of time, you never have too much in memory uh, simultaneously. And so we did that for some of our text preprocessing operators, including BERT, but also some, some other text preprocessing. And it's supported by some of our classifiers, but not all of them. Um, and of course, uh, the same is true for scikit-learn. Some scikit-learn operators support partial fit, but not all of them do. A longer term alternative would be to, uh, to provide a backend that runs, for instance, on something like Apache Spark. And uh, as it turns out, we are actually actively looking into that, but I hesitate to give a timeline for it because uh, 
that's it's a it's a non-trivial amount of work. So um, hopefully you'll see something uh, soonish. But uh, uh, but let us know if you have use cases, and maybe that will even drive our design. Uh, and one other question from Svetlana: uh, Are there plans to export, uh, for instance, PMML, Onyx, uh, or other other types of, of serialization for the final pipelines? Um, yeah, excellent question. So. Uh, PMML and Onyx, of course, being uh, being other formats for representing machine learning pipelines and having the advantage of being very portable. Um, right now, we haven't looked at that yet. I mean, I mentioned a bunch of other export formats. Um, you might be able to do that at least for certain cases um, because we already have an export to scikit-learn pipeline. So if you have a pipeline that only uh, uses functionality available in scikit-learn, you can use the LALI pipeline, convert it to scikit-learn, and then go from scikit-learn to something like PMML. Very good. Alrighty, are there any other questions? Let me make sure on Slack. Uh, 